Hatta Reddy. <laughs> it's done. It's finished. It's here. The play on Manta is complete. I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to say that. About eight months ago now, we made a pledge to our supporters that if we got to a thousand patrons on Patreon, we were gonna buy a Manta, build it, make videos of it, and then play it in as many games as we could. It ended up becoming this long, arduous process of even purchasing it because it went out of stock and then they didn't have it in stock and then there was problems with shipping and it finally got here. And then it got here and another channel decided to do the exact same thing, Squidmar Miniatures. Uh, and they bought a Manta and decided to do the exact same thing as we did. And so I foolishly said, Squidmar, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I challenge you. <laughs> well, if you've watched this, you know how that went. So. He decided to go a different way. He had made an amazing diorama and it is really cool. But as of this recording, he has not finished it yet. And although he technically didn't accept the challenge and I did say ready to play with, not play on like he was going to do because he's making a really cool diorama. We technically did finish first. So I'm going to call that a win. So, back in the fall, it finally arrived. We made an unboxing video. I made my first kind of failed assembly video where I hadn't really gotten very far because this process was long and arduous. Great word. Forge World Resin can be tough to work with and with a 20 year old kit, this was no exception. In fact, this is probably the hardest miniature I've ever worked on and I was still learning. And this was a process for me to how to work with a model kit this big. I've never done a kit this big. The biggest. Forge World kit I've made before was this one. The Townar. And it is a big kit, but <laughs> this thing makes this thing look like a shrimp. In addition, I tried to do something very unique um, that I really wanted to do for something this big. I put LEDs all throughout it. There's like over 150 LEDs in here from pulsating ones on the edges to ones on the guns. And then the engines in the back light up and glow. There's also uh, lights throughout the center and the inside in the cockpit um, and in the crew compartment and the, uh, the tank bay underneath. This is a massive miniature. There were so many challenges in creating this. The process of cutting off all the gates and sprues was actually massive because these are big, massive gates, like this big. Gates meaning where the resin goes to uh, pour into the mold and they're left on the model and you gotta cut them off, but you couldn't just use like snippers or something like that. You have to use like a file, a saw. And thanks to all the helpful YouTube comments, I was able to learn the difference between a coping saw and a hacksaw. Thank you very much for those of you who identified that. I also learned a ton about how to work with resin, how you have to clean the resin before you use it. You have to be careful about cutting it because it creates a lot of dust and that's dangerous for you. Resin warps whether that's through transit or through the molding process or just because of heat. I actually had to bend a lot of the resin back into shape, specifically some of the parts for the fusel main fuselage here was bent out of shape and I actually had to physically clamp it down with glue. I had to do it several times because I didn't do it properly the first couple times and I had to like shave it off and score it and do it over again. Um, even then, I still had some pretty massive gaps along the wings here and here that I tried to fill with putty, mostly successful. There are some places if you look up close that maybe could have been a bit better on the quality, but I'm pretty happy with this. I am not an expert painter. I will say that right now. I feel like I am a decent painter and I feel like I can paint to a great tabletop standard. I'm not Tack or Tycho or Squidmar or any of those other fantastic painters online, but I am happy with this. I went through all the panel lines with a uh, watered down ink to highlight all the panels. Then I did some weathering, some slight weathering uh, with a sponge to do some black, silver, and some of the sepia kind of ink. Lastly, I did some decals. Um, this is a custom decal up top here. This actually says play on uh, in Tau script. 
And then inside the Manta is, I did some custom 3D work here uh, to hide all the wires and the batteries that go right here. And each one of these seats right here has a locker with an assigned Patreon name from some of our top supporters, as well as inside here in the crew compartment, there is names for some of our top patrons there too, some of the ones that have been with us the longest. And then on the underside of these wings and the main hull is 1,300 names, because at the time of when I finally got around to building this thing and printing off the names, our patron had grown from 1,000 to about 1,300. So I printed off all those names, converted them all to Tau script, and put them all on the bottom. It is a little difficult to find. I put them all up for our patrons to see, and some of them were able to actually find them, which I found really surprising, because it's in a really small font to fit it all on there but it was cool to be able to honor them in even that little bit away. Now we actually have quite a few more patrons, so I think we're gonna have to do something different for them because I wanna honor all of our patrons because it makes a big difference. I just wanna take a quick second there to give a shout out to all of our patrons because we couldn't have done this without you and our patronage on Patreon is actually a humongous part of how we pay for what we do here. It costs a lot of money to keep the lights on, rent studios, pay for equipment and personnel, and it makes a big difference for our patrons. Thank you, it goes a long way. If you've ever considered joining us and supporting us, please do. There's some great benefits, early access to our videos. There's some exclusive videos as well. I've been humbled and honored to be a part of that. The last step for this was actually designing some sort of base for this because as you can see, it's flying. I wanted this thing to be able to be up in the sky and fly, and I didn't want it to hover six, feet, uh, six inches off the ground like most flyers do, because it just, they never feel like they're flying. I always, I've always adjusted my flyers to be higher up in the air. So I found a store that sold acrylic rods. I cut up 12 inch strips of acrylic rod. I got some clear acrylic bases and printed off some holders for the acrylic stands to put on the bottom of the Manta and on the stands at the bottom so that it can look like it's floating. And also, I wanted it to take up as little real estate as possible because as you can see on this board, this is huge. Like it takes up the entire board almost. It's also not incredibly stable. Like, <laughs> It does move around a bit, and if I were to push it a little bit, it probably it probably would break and fall over. However, this thing can hover. I'm probably never gonna do anything with it besides hover. The guns are long range. I don't need to move it around. It's just gonna shoot across the battlefields. It's gonna sit in one corner, hover, and nothing will come close. In fact, I recently got to take it in our next feature game. We're doing these videos that we call features, which are big, massive games of 40K that are very narrative focused. We did one on the Battle of Armageddon, specifically Hell's Reach. Next, we're doing a series on the Battle of Damocles. It's basically the first contact war between the Imperium and the Tau Empire. The big massive battle features the Manta. And oh, does it do well. Can't wait to show you that game. We also did a narrative series of Damocles that we're gonna be releasing exclusively to our membership. We also did a narrative campaign of the Damocles Gulf Crusade, and uh, we will be releasing that exclusively to our memberships. So I feel just a huge sigh of relief that this thing is done. <laughs> I worked really hard on it, and I'm happy with how it looks. I hope one day to actually take it to a tournament as my carrying case for my army, because it's got a whole bay underneath that fits um, all the tanks and stuff like that. And I could actually physically fit a very large army in this Manta. And how cool and intimidating would it be to have this thing go from table to table in a tournament? Not very practical though, so we'll see. And we have a couple more games planned with this as well. I want, I still want to see a Kill Team game played on top of this. The real question is now, what's next? Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts on maybe some creative ways of how we can use this. I know TAC had the brilliant idea of strapping rockets to it and see if it could actually fly. Not gonna do that, TAC. But I think the last question is, where do we store this thing? <laughs> <laughs>